What's up, all my beautiful people? Welcome back to the pod. It is officially winter here in Minnesota. It is like negative 10 degrees outside, and I'll be honest, um, that's pretty damn cold. <laughs> We've had a really mild winter up here. Like, I can't complain, all things considered, because December was like mid 20s and 30 degrees all month long. We had very little snow, very little ice, and so all things considered, it has been a very mild winter, but the chill has finally arrived. And it is is to the point where my dog, who is this big furry beast, she can't be outside walking for more than a couple of minutes before she starts shivering and getting uh, unreasonably cold. So that's that's my life right now. That's what I'm dealing with. How about you? <laughs> but anyway, I was I was journaling this morning and I was thinking about some something, and it it dawned on me that there is one master skill in life to becoming a, uh, becoming successful. Okay, that's that's like gratuitous. There's more than one skill. There's many skills that you need to have, accumulate and stack on top of each other. But as I was journaling this morning, there was one skill, one surprising skill that jumped into my mind as as one of those things that most people probably aren't considering. And I'm not just talking about like being financially successful. I'm talking about like if you aren't where you want to be financially, physically, romantically, then it's maybe because you haven't mastered this one skill. And it's not what you think. It's probably not like, go ahead and take a second, go ahead and pause the video right now and just think to yourself, what is the one skill, the master skill that is holding me back from being financially successful, physically successful, romantically successful? And you could come up with all sorts of things and I'm sure you'd be right. But this one really stood out to me this morning. It is this, sales. Yeah, sales. <laughs> Listen, like everything in life is a transaction. Like right now, for example, you could stop listening to this. You could get up and you could go to the gym and you could go do a workout, but it will cost you time, energy, and comfort. And so the question is, are you willing to pay that expense every day in exchange for a healthy body? Well, the answer to that really depends on how well you're able to sell yourself on the benefits of going to the gym, how well you're able to overcome your own objections, the things that you block the sale with, right? Procrastination and excuses, and maybe how well you're able to sit with that quiet discomfort that comes in the moments after asking yourself for the sale. You, you can think of like when you're trying to sell somebody a product, it's so clear and obvious, like you have to sell the benefits and you have to be able to overcome their objections. And then you have to be willing to make the ask and then sit there in the discomfort. And yet, like it's, it applies to ourselves when we're trying to sell ourselves on eating healthy and going and doing the workout on doing the work that needs to be done, doing the thing that is going to cost you maybe your comfort and you know energy and time, the things that maybe you don't want to you don't want to part ways with, right? And I think if you can sell yourself on your own dreams. I think the ability to do that is like one of the most valuable skills in the world, like t selling yourself on the fact that your dreams are achievable, that it is something that is within your purview that you could accomplish if you put your mind and your effort towards it. That's a very powerful skill. And I think a lot of people don't have the ability to sell themselves on their dream. But more importantly, maybe is if you had the ability to sell other people on your dreams, then you could do practically anything you set your mind to in life. Because so much of what we can accomplish is like dependent on how we work with and through other people. But here's the thing. It's not enough just to sell people on your dreams or vision for you know your business, this product, for you romantically. I'm a great partner, right? It's not enough for that. Like great sales begins with a great product. And so to take this step, like one step further, instead of trying to sell a shitty product, for instance, if you're not where you want to be romantically in life, it might be because you're a shitty product. It might be because you're not worthy of finding a great partner. So the first step is become the type of person who would make for a great romantic partner. So become a great product, right? Number two is you got to get out there and you got to start pitching. And this is like, this is how business operates. Have a great product. And then it's a numbers game. Get out there and pitch it over and over and over. And, and I really do believe that this is one of the a pretty neat little framework to think through this. It's new to me. I haven't thought about it very deeply yet, but 
Something about it rings true, like the ability to sell ourselves on our dreams and the ability to sell others on our dreams and then to create the product worth selling. I think there is something really interesting about that framework. So hope you found that kind of interesting and valuable. Um, it's a little bit different than usual. So uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. I appreciate you. We'll catch you in the next video. But until then, stay hyper-focused, my friends.